I'm no expert at soldering at all, so that's a little bit of an issue when it comes to designing and building these custom keyboards that I've kind of gone down this rabbit hole of doing. Uh, but it, I didn't want to let that put my put me off, so I've kind of jumped in and experimented and learned enough to actually be able to build these things. And as a result of that, there's a couple of different approaches that I've discovered, and one of those is using a hot air uh, gun basically to to use solder paste instead of using a soldering iron and solder wire. And this actually transforms the process. It makes it much much neater the final result compared to my botched attempt at using the soldering iron which when I was trying to use the soldering iron and the wire was just kind of just terrible you know and I kept burning the pads off the board and all this with the solder paste and the hot air gun it just it, it sort of neatens itself up it's really this magical process where you see the solder paste sort of absorb itself onto just the pad and there's no it's very neat and it tucks itself under where the foot of the thing connects to it and so it's really really neat really fast and really easy you can't really go wrong uh, you, you put the solder paste on the pads and then you put the things on the pads, heat it all up, and it just works really, really nicely. Uh, much less faffing around. And actually what was interesting was I tried this using the through hole solder joints as well, and it even works for that and creates quite neat joints there as well. So I'm going to run through the process of building this keyboard using this hot air technique. This is a board that you've seen in the color demonstration video showing the colors available from PCBWay, and PCBWay are kindly sponsoring this video as well. So many thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and I'm definitely happy to recommend the service they provide. They're really fast, really friendly to work with, never had any technical problems at all with the boards that they send out, and they do these amazing colors as well, and they have an advanced section with even more amazing colors, and I'm hoping to do a, a sort of review of those colors soon, so stay tuned for that. Definitely happy to recommend them. They're a great company to work with, very fast, and will send you the PCBs as a result of you uploading the Gerber files, and I've done lots of videos looking at that process as well. So the build process I'm gonna look at now was all done with hot air. The only thing that I haven't used hot air for is soldering the legs into the controller. I actually have the controllers already uh, wired up with the legs from previous builds, so I didn't need to do that. Uh, but I'd still use a soldering iron to do that because I think the hot air all over the controller is not, isn't a good idea. Um, but for everything else, the little switches, the hot air works fine. It was not hot enough to melt it, although my initial attempts did melt a few. I had it on the wrong setting, you want it on the sort of medium setting on this one that I've got. Now, if you want to grab the same one, I'll put the link in the description below, but obviously there's all kinds of approaches uh, including sort of hot plates that you put the things on as well and you can use solder paste in different ways but this is just a you know, cheap Amazon hot air gun and solder paste from Amazon as well that's what I'm experimenting with here. So the first thing we're doing here are these jumpers um, and you can just see they're little rectangles but they've got a, a, a sort of v-shaped division in them so by default there's no connection between them what we want to do here is connect them up and this is the one case where you actually want to use a whole bunch of this solder paste just a big blob on the top uh, because if there isn't enough you'll just the the solder paste will sort of retract to the shape of the two separate parts of these pads we actually need a generous dollop of it to make sure it bridges the gap and you'll see in fact that uh, even this amount isn't enough for some of these and we'll fix those in a second so I'm just turning on the, the uh, heat gun here to its medium setting and you can see immediately it's enough to make that solder paste start looking a bit sloppy and it melts and spreads out. They're all joined together and you're thinking at this point, how's this going to work? But something really special happens. So I'm just moving it around to avoid any kind of hot spots and just to sort of even it out a bit over the whole thing. You probably don't need to waggle it around quite as much as I'm doing here. So you can see it's sort of starting to shrink a little bit at the top there and then miraculously this is just real-time playback here of what's going on suddenly it all shrinks and sort of turns into this lovely shiny perfectly formed blob on top of the pad now the, those on the left there you can see they're joined up so i'm just going to just tap that with the end of my tweezers and you'll see that it'll just immediately split apart again. So it's quite easy situation to fix. As well as a sort of byproduct of using lots of this solder paste, there is the risk of that happening, but we do really need to use a lot for it to work on these uh, solder jumpers. Same situation here. So just tap it and they just spring apart and all suddenly goes really neat again. This is a few seconds later. Now you can see they've kind of gone hard on the top there and the few that haven't quite made the bridge between the two connections I'm just going to put a little bit more solder paste on heat that up it's not a problem to do this so it didn't cause any issues with the the other ones there and you can see it just shrinks in and there's a couple more like this where I didn't quite put a big enough blob on there sped up here a little bit 
Um, and I'm just going to show this process because on that previous shot I hadn't, um, I'd already got the small switches and the button on in place. So this was another shot that I did from overhead where I was doing the same thing. You can see the blobs on the right um, and I was also actually putting the switches onto this one. So a much smaller amount of solder paste on these tiny pads. You don't need much for these. Uh, certainly nothing like the large blobs that I, I was using on the, the bridging pads there. And it doesn't matter at all if they spread out across the pads, it's just, just a small amount. And then you're just dropping the, the switches on top here. Now this switch doesn't have any legs underneath, so it's just floating there. And I've just sat it on top of the solder paste. These slider switches do have little pins that go through the holes in the board. So as soon as they're in place, they kind of stay put. And then obviously just applying the heat in the same way here. And you can see just how neat it is compared to my attempt with the soldering iron that you can see in another video. So I flipped it over and we're going to do the same actually for the hot swap sockets on the back of the board as well. Um, and this sort of, again, this was quite a tricky fiddly process with a soldering iron. I know there are going to be soldering experts out here that think this is completely the wrong approach and that's absolutely fine. I'm not really interested in what the best practice is here. I'm just sort of looking for shortcuts to make this a simple way of building a keyboard when you're not actually an expert in soldering like myself. Uh, and I found this method to be just sort of very fast and very straightforward. So I'm kind of just putting a thin layer of the solder paste on here. You see the board hot from from heating it up from the other side so it's kind of spreading out very quickly and it's just um, covering the pad rather than thinking in terms of a blob here it doesn't need a great deal and then I'm just going to go ahead and just stick the stick the uh, sockets on the top there let them sink into the holes and just quickly push them all in just making sure they are all totally flush into the board there and then we can start to apply the heat again. And again, you're looking for that process of the solder paste shrinking and going shiny. And then you know that it's kind of melted enough and it's created that connection. And then you can take the heat off. You can see the solder paste kind of spread out there and then it starts coming back in and shrinking onto the pad and it goes shiny and you can see it's done its job there and you can move the heat onto the next one. And once you get the temperature and the airflow right out of these heat guns, the process really doesn't take very long. First time I did this, I kind of blew all the components off the top of the board. I had it on the high airflow mode, when actually just you want high air temperature, but low airflow so that you can get quite close to the board here without blowing everything off, but you're still applying the, the, the right amount of heat to get this solder paste to do its thing. So I'm sure, like I said, the experts with the soldering irons are going to think this is a complete waste of time and they could whiz through the board and do this probably in, in even less time with a soldering iron. And that's, of course, absolutely fine. Uh, this is just an experiment, really. And I'm actually going to go as far as using the solder paste on these through hole joints as well, which I think is really probably very much a no-no in, the, uh, in, the, <laughs> in the, the soldering expert community. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just using an old controller. This isn't the controller that I'm actually going to use, so it will get hot through this process process. All, all I'm using it here for is a bit of stability to keep those sockets um, in the right shape, in the right place. And I've just taped them both on there uh, with a bit of masking tape. And then I'm going to stick the solder paste over the top of those legs coming through the board here on the back of the board. I think from what you'll see in this video and the experience from, from this one is that this actually isn't enough solder. I could have squeezed it down into the holes a little bit more because as you'll see, once it's done, it sort of drops down into the hole. Some of them do form that nice sort of bigger joint that comes up to meet the leg in the little cone shape. Uh, I think that was where I'd sort of got just the right amount of solder paste, but the other sort of sinks into the holes a little bit. I guess that connection could be a little bit better if I'd added a little bit more here. But you can see the whole thing kind of takes a little bit of time on this one, but it does get there. 
And again, you can see the solder paste all everywhere. I think the key with this is to make sure the solder paste is on the side of, on the outside, basically, of this footprint on the board so that it, there's less risk of it hitting those inner jumper pads. You can see at the top left there that the, the solder has flown over that pad. Luckily, it doesn't bridge the gap, but it is gonna give us a little bit of solder on that pad. Again, the reason I'm using this technique for this rather than the soldering iron, which is probably by far the more appropriate method, is just for neatness, really. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just such a, a non-expert with soldering with a soldering iron, I'm never really happy with the messiness of it. Whereas with this approach, it's just magic how it just cleans itself up and everything just looks even and nice and neat. And of course, you could tweak the amount of solder paste you put on to, to improve that even more. But it's just brilliant how, how neat and tidy it makes the whole thing. And there's just so much less fiddliness, you know, sort of hovering the tiny points of these soldering irons on these pads. I find it quite fiddly. It's not, it's not the, the best thing that I can think of doing with my time. Whereas just squirting a load of solder paste on and heating it all up with an air gun, like, you know, that's the kind of level that I want to do this with, especially as I'm iterating through these boards quite frequently. I want something super easy and pretty fast as well. I think for me, this method is actually faster than using a soldering iron. So I'm just going to show, while well, I've got this uh, good close-up here, a shot of, of crimping on these JST uh, parts that go into the plug. Uh, you can get a crimping tool here, which is a much better way of doing this. I, because I'm going to be doing this so infrequently, obviously I'm reusing the batteries between my boards. I only need to really do this uh, for you know two batteries and then I'm done. I actually was making a, a second keyboard, so I've got four batteries in total. So I oh, thought I'd use this opportunity to, to show this process again. So all you do is you're, you've got the sort of two bits that you wrap around. One wraps around the shield of the wire, the rubber, and the other crimps onto the wire terminal exposed part itself uh, but when you use a proper crimping tool you get this sort of nice double curled uh, shape with those bits of metal but I'm just literally just fudging them in and that's fine you know the connection's good enough and you can see the shape there there's a little sort of notch on the top of those holes and that lines up with the little tooth shape on the bottom of that metal piece so you slide that in and then you'll see the little tooth pop up through the gap behind that switch and that's what locks it in place into this plug. So you can just see that there, what I'm pointing at. You can see the tooth on the, on the back of this piece of metal there. That lines up with the little groove in the hole and then slides into place. This is a good shot you can see it just going straight in and locking into place there and then we can just connect the two uh, connect the plug into the socket there and the battery is in place on the board and we can put our real controller into that socket so the legs are already in place on these controllers and you can see in a different video where i've soldered those legs into the controller but they just drop into the socket there and you can see the power comes on just fine and we can stick the key switches into our hot swap sockets which is just a question of pushing them into place. And this is what makes that process of iterating the design of the board so easy. You can just pull this all off and move it onto a new board. So take the switches off, take the controller and the battery off, and you, all you're having to do in terms of soldering is the hot swap sockets, the slider, the reset button, and the sockets and the JST connector for the battery. But you get to reuse your controller, battery, and key switches what it looks like from the back and you can see this red color as well which is the one I was using before the first one that I built and again thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video definitely happy to recommend their very fast uh, very efficient and friendly service and don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one